Hey, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here again with Steve Sanders. And today we're gonna to talk about the cooling package that you'll have to add to your R2.8 liter crate engine. Yeah, so first we'll start off on the engine here. As it comes out of the uh, crate, you'll see some capped off connections that you wanna be sure you leave capped until you're ready to connect to, to keep you know from debris, from grinding and welding and fitting your motor mounts and all that other good stuff, or just general shop or garage dust from getting into your coolant system. So. Here we have your upper radiator hose connection. Uh, coolant flows this way out of this. So this is a, I believe, 42 millimeter connection, which is about an inch and five eighths. Uh, but check your manual for that. Uh, and then down here on the opposite end, you have your inbound from your lower radiator hose. Uh, this is almost a two inch connection. Uh, I think it's 50 millimeters uh, to be exact. Uh, your water pump is belt driven. It is part of the front cover. It is not something that is on this mega bracket over here that we talked about in another series. Uh, so it does stay here. Uh, we don't have any optional configurations for that right now. So uh, on the back of this, you have your heater core connection inlet and outlet. So coming up under here in this thermostat housing, you've got your heater core supply line. So a lot of people will run this around, set a heater hose into this tray, and come back to your typical heater core uh, interface, which is out here. We have a hard line back here behind the engine, and that's gonna be your heater core return line. Um, very important to note that this engine does have an exhaust gas recirculation uh, cooler, and that is cooled by engine coolant. So you have two more lines that come up uh, and cool that hot exhaust gas before it comes back into your intake. It's very important to get all the air out of that. This is the highest point of the coolant system on the engine. So there is a bleeder port here. Uh, you wanna take that screw out when you're doing your initial fill. It's a good checkpoint when you're trying to purge the air out of it after you've done that initial startup and warmed up the engine. Uh, it's really good to verify that you have coolant all the way up to that point. And then that actually turns into a port for your fully deaerating coolant system. Uh, when we say fully deaerating cooling system, we do have a recommendation for a tank. We want you to run a line from here and from here, this little rubber cap on your thermostat housing, tee those two together, put them in the top of your tank, and then uh, on the bottom of your tank, you'll tee into your lower radiator hose, and then on your radiator cap on your standard radiator, you'll also go back into that tank. That helps purge all the air out of the system uh, and keep you from doing any kind of damage to this or the radiator. The last bit on the engine for cooling package is, we've said this is a charge air cooled engine. So that means unlike the old 4BT or anything else that you have a crossover pipe from the turbo back into the intake, we need you to run this through a charge air cooler. So you have your compressor outlet here. This is gonna go into a charge air cooler. So you come up with whatever plumbing works depending on the charge air cooler you pick, how far it is in front of the engine, et cetera you have the proper silicone or rubber boots and clamps to make sure that there's some um, flexibility in that connection. Comes across here and you'll come back into this intake on the other side. The aftermarket does have some options now to clock this intake in various configurations that can help with selecting kind of a universal charge air cooler uh, that'll fit your various grill configurations. So check that out if this doesn't fit or if you wanna avoid unnecessary bends in your return line. So now that we've looked at kind of the cooling system that comes on your engine, we'll look at how that's installed in a vehicle to look at the rest of the cooling package that you'll have to supply. All right, so your cooling package is made up of several different components, all kind of stacked in order. So we'll just start at the front and move to the back. We have your AC condenser. So the engine does not come with an AC compressor. There is a spot on the mega bracket that you can add one or you can obviously add one by changing the mega bracket. So if you do add an AC compressor, then you'll also want to add an AC condenser. Typically that's at the front of your cooling package, but you can move that around depending on kind of what priority you want to give all these different components. Uh, behind the AC com condenser is your charge air cooler. So like Steve said, this is a turbocharged diesel engine, which means you have to cool that charge air before it goes back into your intake. Uh, you want to make sure that the tanks on this aren't blocking the radiator core to optimize airflow through the entire system. Um, and you kind of want to target your charge air cooler to take up about half of the height of your radiator to make sure that some of the radiator is fully exposed to that fresh air flowing through. 
Moving back to your radiator, uh, this one we use the stock TJ radiator. Uh, depending on what vehicle you're starting with, you may or may not be able to do that. Uh, just depending on what the heat rejection rate uh, was of your current engine versus the heat rejection rate that we need. So we need 3,400 BTUs per minute of heat rejection. Uh, so check out our vehicle profiles on CumminsRepower.com. Uh, look at the forums, kind of see what people have done in the vehicle that you want to repower to see if your radiator is capable of the heat rejection that this engine needs. Uh, behind the radiator is our fan, so we are running electric fans that are fully shrouded. Uh, the shrouding is very important to get all the airflow through the entire package rather than coming up and around um, and, and not going through the cores of your charge air cooler and your radiator. So keeping that shroud um, you know, tight to your radiator and making sure all that air flows through is really important. Um, another thing about these e-fans is that they're controlled by our ECM. Uh, which means it turns them on and off depending on the coolant temperature of the engine. If you're using a mechanical fan instead of these electric fans, uh, temperature control is kind of on you and you would have to optimize when that fan is on and off, making sure that the engine isn't overcooled or undercooled. So the max cooling temperature for this engine is 225 F. Uh, so making sure you're staying below that, otherwise you're gonna start hitting D rates where we're gonna pull power out of the engine to kind of prevent it from overheating any further. Uh, so when sizing your cooling package, kind of keep that temperature in mind. If you're doing any tests, you know, that's gonna be your, your high threshold that you're gonna wanna stay below. Um, when you're doing those tests and, and looking at your temperature gauge, if you have one of those run into your dash or looking at your Murphy gauge and looking at coolant temperature, uh, just be aware that that temperature is going to fluctuate. A lot of times in these newer vehicles, kind of once your thermostat opens, um, your coolant temperature just stays where it is. And that's it's kind of a, a tummy comfort thing that newer auto manufacturers have for you. Um, our coolant temperature is a direct reading from the coolant temperature in the engine, which means it is going to move depending on duty cycle and how hot the engine run is running or how cool the engine is running. So just be aware when you're looking at your gauge that that, that needle or the, the Murphy gauge temperature is going to fluctuate uh, pretty regularly. Yeah, if you're off-road, off you're going to see 176 degrees F to 180, pretty much no matter where you are, no matter how hot it is. If you get on the interstate and you're pushing 38-inch tires, and you're geared so you're running at 2400 RPM, it's probably gonna climb up to 205, 210, and that's okay. It's just unnerving sometimes to see a sweep and you might think something's wrong or that your cooling package isn't dialed in. Uh, yeah, as long as you're below as long as that you're 225, that range, yeah. you're, you're still doing pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think one of the last bits to talk about is uh, what type of coolant to use. So we do have uh, Fleet Guard is a Cummins brand. Uh, it's been part of you know, Cummins filtration since the 50s or 60s. Um, we have on our owner's manual bulletin numbers. So if you go to Quick Serve, you can always see the latest and greatest recommendations for our Fleet Guard product. Or if you can't get Fleet Guard and you're in a pinch, at least what the coolant specs we um, suggest are. Uh, here I have a, a bottle of concentrated. She's got a bottle of 50-50. General rule of thumb uh, we like to follow is if you start with one, stick with one. Uh, if you want to carry spare fluid, carry what's already in your system uh, to avoid mixing and matching. I think that's it for our cooling package discussion. See you next time on Cummins Repower Garage. Thanks.